Good afternoon. Um, my name is Dr. Celia Weiss Bombara, and I am introducing a short hour long kind of lunchtime program surrounding African diasporic experimental art. Uh, and the rest of the title is Interdisciplinary Process and Praxis. So I'm going to begin by giving a really brief introduction to myself and some of the questions surrounding this and then to welcoming into this space each one of these incredible artists and scholars who we have here today to contribute and then they will each give a little bit of an introduction to their work, work in progress, where they're going with things, and we'll have a little bit of dialogue. Um, this is obviously a really deep talk topic. We could talk for a very long time about it. So um, we'll be digging in a bit today. So um, my name is Celia Weiss Bambara, and I'm a dance artist and scholar, as well as a dual citizen of the US and Burkina Faso. I'm a second generation diasporic Jewish woman and my work engages practices research through improvisation, sight dance, dance film, photography, and through writing and publication. Since 2006, I've directed the African Contemporary Company, the CCB Dance Project, which was formed in, with dance and theater artist Christian Bambara. My current practice is research work analyzes the overlaps of interculturalism in African and Jewish diasporas. So it's kind of where I'm coming at to with the, <laughs> with the set of ideas. Um, I teach dance courses at Coppin State University in the humanities department and coordinate the dance program as an assistant professor. Um, interdisciplinary work in the African diaspora has occurred for many years within the context of movements like Afrofuturism, African contemporary dance, and experimentalism in theater, dance, music, and film. The intersections between the sciences and the humanities have provided also fertile grounds for experimentation in the arts as well. I really became interested in interdisciplinary work as a college student living in East LA in the 90s, as I began studying Haitian dance while listening to underground hip hop. For me, there was a kind of revolution that happened in terms of ideas and practices of liberation, freedom, coalition, and experimentation. This deep interest got deeper while dancing for Company Jaka and Port-au-Prince in which the boundaries of theater and dance collided for me and later through becoming immersed, so to speak, in African contemporary dance on the continent where I lived between 2012 and 2015. Through highlighting that these artists work in contribution to the vast community of practitioners, my hope today is to bring greater depth to the dialogue about their work but also about the work of so many artists in the US, Africa, and the Caribbean, and the Middle East, and Asia, who are doing global contemporary experimental work, and how these dialogues relate to structural realities, innovation, anti-racism, feminism, decolonization, and of course, many other things. So I'm going to give a big old ashe to this, and aibobo, and we're going to virtually kind of throw down some water for the ancestors and begin this dialogue. Okay, so I am first going to introduce uh, Jamal Moore. Jamal Moore is a native of Baltimore, Maryland, who is a multi-instrumentalist, composer, performer, and educator. His background includes California Institute of the Arts and MFA in 2012, the Berkeley College of Music in 2005, UB Blank Jazz Orchestra under the direction of Christopher Calloway Brooks. Um, and historical acclaimed Frederick Douglass Sr. High, who notable alumni Thurgood Marshall, Cab Calloway, and Ethel Ennis and graduated from. Some notable luminaries Jamal has worked with and recorded with are Wadada Leo Smith, Roscoe Mitchell, Nicole Mitchell, Archie Shep, David Ornette Cherry, Tamika Reed, Dr. Bill Cole, DJ Lou Gorbea, George Duke, Sheila E. Murphy, Murray, J.D. Parin, Ross Moshe, and H. Prism Anti-Pop Consortium. Um, he is an affiliate of the Pan-African People's Orchestra of the late Horace Tapscott, the Black Prax Praxis of David Boykin, a member of the Conjure Collective and co-creator of the Ancestral Duo with Luke Stewart. Jamal currently leads his own groups, the Ekebulan Orchestra, Napata Strings, Black Elements Quartet, Organics Trio, and Majuba Duo. He states, as musicians, we are healers of humanity and have a responsibility to cleanse disease through positive tones, frequencies, and vibrations. 
Music is the nucleus and universal language of the oversoul, mind, body, and spirit. I'm going to read Julie's biography and Helenius's, and then we're going to welcome each one of them into the space. Julie Ira So was born in June 1st, 1981 in Malagasy. Well, she's a Malagasy choreographer and dancer. She lives in Madagascar and she's the director of the Adirumbala Dance Company since 2004 and Space Marais, which is a dance studio and artist in residency space, supported by the project Coupe de Pousse by Ecole de Sable since 2015. She is initiator and artistic director of the International Workshop Arts for Dancers for two, from 2011 to 2014 and creator of the Mare Space since 2008. Adjurum Bala Dance Company is founded by Julia Irasoa in 2004 and is composed by dancers and musicians from different styles, contemporary, urban, traditional, popular. And the company has created about 15 choreographies that have already toured on national and international festivals, including the Africa Festival in Germany, the East African Tour in 2015, Dance Pay in Reunion Island in 2014, Dance L'Afrique Dance in Bamako, has toured in Paris and in South Africa in 2006, 2010, and 2012. She owns the Puma Creative, a prize for women choreographers in 2010. She won this prize um, as part of the Dance Africa Dance Festival, which is one of the larger festivals in Africa. Um, and apart from her work with dancers in her own company, Julie has found it necessary to take time for herself to create and share through solo dance pieces. She has had residencies and international tours, um, most recently of her solo work at a Time to Dance Festival in Tanzania, the Bates Dance Festival in the US, the Sejong International Dance Festival, and the Sil Dance Festival in South Korea, and the Kazuo Ono Festival in Japan. And I'm going to introduce Helenius Wilkins, who will begin the presentation shortly. So Mr. Helenius Wilkins is, a, is from Lafayette, Louisiana, and currently is a Boulder, Colorado transplant. He is a choreographer, performance artist, educator, and innovator who lives in a country where not even for a moment he is allowed to forget that he is Black. Wilkins' creative research and projects are rooted in the interconnections of American contemporary performance, cultural history, and identities of Black men. His project examines the race to dancing body in ways rituals can access knowledge. He uses remembering to piece together and liberate Black identity through performance. Having performed 60 works and honors, including the Pola Norenska Award for Contemporary Achievement in Dance, DC's highest honor given by the Washington Performing Arts Society in 2008, the Kennedy Center Local Dance Commissioning Project in 2002 and 2006, the foundations and organizations, including the NEA and the NIFA, National Dance Project, the National Performing Arts Network, NPN, the, the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities, and the Boulder Office of Arts and Culture Public Arts Program have supported his work. He founded and artistically directed the DC-based Edworks Dance Theater, an all-male dance company predominantly of African-American men that toured nationally and internationally from 2001 to 2014. He is an associate chair and professor of dance at CU Boulder, and he is a member of the National Board of Directors of the American College Dance Association, ACDA, and the Northwest region and was appointed in 2008 by Governor Jared Polis to the Colorado Council of Creative Industries. Welcome Helenius, Julie, and Jamal um, to this virtual space and to this current dialogue about praxis and process and pr process and praxis in African diasporic work and experimentation, which you all are deeply engaged in. And um, it's interesting, the other day I was in a meeting um, about Martin Luther King planning and I wanted to read a full um, artist biography and somebody said, well, that's really long. And I said, we as artists need our full biographies read to welcome us into spaces so that we understand our work more deeply. So welcome sure. you all uh, yet again. And I'm gonna pass the baton, as they say in French, to um, Helenius to begin his presentation. 
Thank you so much uh, for that wonderful framing of today's uh, panel. Um, it is a pleasure to be here. I'm grateful for the invitation. Um, again, I'm Helenius J. Wilkins, and um, this this topic is near and dear around praxis uh, and process and notions of experimentation uh, because that is it feels like it's the heartbeat. Uh, to everything that I do and and all the ways in which I move in the world. Um, and so for today, I am offering um, snippets of uh, two works um, that are more recent uh, to my body of work. One I created last summer, uh, which was a screen dance project actually um, titled Dirt. And um, it emerged um, as a way for me to find my way um, at a heightened time of unrest. Um, and uh, my usual mode of uh, facing adversity is to action. Um, and so this became one of my ways to action. Um, and it manifested into one of my more experimental uh, dance film projects. So I'll just share one minute of uh, that project and it is titled Dirt. Thank you. And as a second offering uh, to round out my uh, brief introduction to my work is uh, to offer a behind the scenes look at my current work, um, which bears a, a long title, The Conversation Series, Stitching the Geopolitical Quilt to Rebody Belonging. And that title is intentional because to do the work of social justice, it is not a project. It's an ongoing effort, and this work is rooted in art and social justice. And so what I am um, leaning into is a practice and leaning into ritual and leaning into um, navigating and setting the pace for creating spaces where we can imagine a world by making and dancing to become better ancestors. The vision for this work is to stitch our country back together again, one state at a time. So the project requires going to all 50 states. Every place we tour it, it'll be a different configuration. These panels that are up here are going to be hung in different ways in different theaters. We'll be playing with a sense of familiarity and timelessness. I'm fascinated by art and technology, and then I'm interested in how to bring to life worlds that reflect what I imagine the future looking like. This is a battery regulator. I know about the sensors, but I don't know about anything behind the motivation. Everything is moving to mirror my 12 mile walks. How am I in this right now? How can we as dancers build this relationship where we're also creating the world? Again, one state at a time. All right, 
mute. Sorry about that. Um, thank you. So that's my offering of what I'm working on right now and um, a little a taste of what I do. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Helenius. Um, can we then pass the baton or pass it over to Jamal? Mr. Moore? Yes. I'm going to present pretty much a little mini excerpt of uh, some, some work that is in the process of being composed and fairly thorough composed. Uh, it's titled The Hereafter, and I'm just waiting for it to load up. Uh, can anyone see the screen? Yes. All right.
So that's a short um, excerpt. You can go to the actual site itself. Piece composed um, around the begin around this time last year for uh, Pacific Series Nomadic uh, through a colleague of mine, Leah to Mon Leah Mona to Will. Uh, it's entitled the hereafter because I'm focusing a lot of my work sitting around when we're dealing with the past plus the present and the future all existing at once. And we're dealing with the constructs of African humanity in the diaspora from the continent itself to where we at in the West. And my current practice, what I entitled my work of deconstructing terminologies and things of that sort, such as, for lack of better terms, avant-garde, experimental jazz, things of that sort. My particular work and practice, I consider it African science. And when I entitled African science, which I'll go into detail later when one questions roll in, and begin talking about our practice, will basically sum up the equation where we're dealing with the ancient of uh, where we attain and originated from, going back to ancient Kemet or Tamare, ancient Egypt, the Dogon of Africa on to the modern way back today, and the Africans here in the West, or those of us who are indigenous descendants of the African here in the West, who are originally here, as well as those that were brought here, they were enslaved as well. So that is a one of the many conversations in progress right now that's going to be extended further entitled to hear after. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Mr. Moore. Um, Ms. Iarisoa, can I welcome you yes. into the space again? Yeah, thank you. So uh, greetings. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this live talk. I'm glad to be here among you and to share my professional experiences about dance. So I'm Julia Arisua. I'm a Malagasy dancer and choreographer. And apart from what was already announced in the introduction, I started dancing since I was very young. And this passion for dance still follow me until now. So today I'm 40 years old and I'm still dancing. So I, I really thank life for that. Um, I practiced dance since I was six years old. I took dance classes in different small dance schools in my region, but I hadn't really thought of becoming a professional in this field because I can say that in Madagascar, dance is not yet considered as a real job. Also dancers and choreographers are not really considered as real artists. So being a Malagasy choreographer living here in Madagascar is not always easy, but my passion for dance led led me to make this choice and uh, this which is not a second choice because I completed my high school study at a very young age so I had the choice to do something else but I chose the path of dance because I'm convinced that dance is an art that contributes enormously to society and uh, that's why I dare to say that apart from being an artist, I am also a social worker because I do a lot of social action through dance and I evolve artistically in my social environment. And I think that apart from being an art of movement and body, dance is also for me a whole art of living. So one of my social artistic projects is called Danse pour tous that I initiated five years ago with my dance company. It's a free weekly dance class program for those who want to take dance classes but don't necessarily have the means to pay for dance classes. Mm -hmm. It was with the goal of just sharing and making dance accessible for everybody. So I personally invested financially and also in terms of time, but as the program progressed, we had noticed an evolution of demand coming from the participants and also from some professionals in the field of dance who would like to intervene in the program. So we've been looking for external financing to be able to answer those requests. And we are happy for this year, we had the financial support from the African Culture Fund, which allowed us to expand the program by inviting several professors, professors of dance also by inviting local dance companies to make performances and by inviting several professional meetings around dance. And at the moment, we still continue in this program. Well, concerning my career as a choreographer and dancer, due to the fact that here in Madagascar, there is not yet statues of artists intermittent nor a possibility of local subsidy for the choreographic creation. So I function by answering calls for application for a residency, trainings and dance festivals. I also carry out a lot of self-production because most of the time it's the only 
rare ways to perform locally. Mm -hmm. Even if my main job is choreographer, I'm obliged to take many other roles like administration, organization of events around dance and many others because there are still very few people interested in accompanying dance projects here in Madagascar. Um, currently, I'm continuing all my local activities with my company, uh, like workshop, dance classes, and performances. I'm also a member of a choreographer's association called Café de la Danse that organizes um, local dance events, and the next edition will be in November. Uh, also, I'm currently in the middle of preparing an international dance festival, which will be held in Madagascar around June for next year. So. I will keep you posted on the project. Uh, well, for, uh, for a few years now, I have been researching and experimenting with a style of dance that I have named Marai, which is a traditionally inspired dance that I have brought into my gestures and choreographic writing. Um, what I find interesting in traditional dances is, first of all, their richness in terms of movement. If I take, for example, the Saudi Ampika, which is a traditional dance from the center of Madagascar that, uh, that uses all part of the body. So it's very practical for waking up all the articulation. Uh, there are also ritual dances from the south of Madagascar, such as Valuhuba, which is a ritual dance to pray to God to, to make the rain come. I don't know if it's a myth or a reality, but uh, in any case, each time I practice this dance, uh, it takes me somewhere else. So that is exactly what I want to bring into my choreographic work at the moment, because I think that uh, a choreography is not only about uh, to be pretty on stage or to tell a story or, or whatever. But first of all, for me, it's to make people feel something also and to bring them to think uh, yes, uh, so as a woman artist in Africa, I have some difficulties to overcome on a daily basis. For example, in Africa in general, there is still a tendency to think that it is the men who lead and women follow. <laughs> so for me, as the leader of a dance company made up mainly of men, it is sometimes quite a battle to establish authority within the group, even in the eyes of people outside the company, it is hardly acceptable. Also, as an artist, I'm always very careful about how, I, how I'm going to bring a sensitive subject into my works, because whether a man or a woman artist, even though we would like to have this great freedom of expression, each country has its own taboos to respect. So sometimes we, we have to follow the rules. So I think that's all I can say about my artistic ex experiences. Uh, now I, I would like to share a, a short video of my work. Okay. Uh, if, uh, yeah.
Thank you so much, Julie, for that beautiful sharing of your immense amount of work in Madagascar and internationally. 
Um, I am grateful to each one of you for your presentations. And I had some questions just to kind of start us off and then we can take a look at the chat. Um, so in terms of praxis, these ideas of, you know, how do we see ideas in action? Um, how do you see that or value it in your own work? And how is that idea, set of ideas of praxis um, part of kind of process for you? So I think maybe we can just talk about praxis first and then kind of filter into process and or if they fit together for you, we can kind of make them fit together, right? So, um, so yet again, praxis, um, Ideas in action is an easy way of saying it, but it's also um, maybe perhaps in terms of um, African experimentalism or Black experimentalism in the United States or larger ideas of experimentalism, um, how do ideas of social justice um, or identity or coalition or liberation or, you know, how is that worked into your work is another way of kind of Right, and each one of you have spoken to that in different ways, so. And um, I guess I'll, I'll say like maybe a little bit. <laughs> um, it's, it's a really wonderful question that you, you ask um, because, you know, as I let it land on my body, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the notion of an idea and when does something you know emerge and um at least as it relates to what drives me um to do what i do and and to come into my work um, from my identity as black male in america um there's this there's this feeling that the idea has always been there and like it's not discovered it's like it's my reality <laughs> Right. And so I'm starting from my reality. I'm starting, I'm tracing back into uh, what what makes up who I am. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm starting from there. You know, my body is a vessel for ideas, for information to emerge. Um, and then it's my body in conversation with the environment. Um, that I place myself in and, you know, how am I subverting spaces by being in them or how am I renegotiating my identity to be in them? Um, so I think that's maybe, yeah, something about where that's landing for me. And I just feel like this notion of praxis and process for me is deeply interwoven. It, it feels like one in the same, like there's a learning and there is, um, there is an um, an exploration. There there's an uncovering, but there's a deepening. There's a tracing mm -hmm. back, but there's also a tracing forward. That's happening, and, mm -hmm. and it's happening on a full body level. So yeah. that's kind of our land initially. <laughs> but that's, it's a lot of somatic information to process too. It's like where's the idea? Where's it coming right. from? Is it is it emerging? I'm gonna ask like. I think one of the complexities too, when you're always playing with that big theoretical thing, like praxis is like, well, what is this here for me? And where does it move? So right. that's inevitably what I'm asking. And you just, you know, spoke to that beautifully. So it's kind of like, you know, you spoke to also this idea of space and time and where your identity is landing in that and how you're responding to different things coming from this embodied space, right? Right. So I think that also mm. speaks then to this idea of experimentalism, right? So how and where is the response, right? Yeah. And then how do yeah. you need to respond to that in terms of your own process too, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, and sometimes, and, and maybe in some way that becomes like, um, you know, the seed mm -hmm. <laughs> that yeah. I start to uh, nurture, you know, that I start to uh water <laughs> yeah that, that big manifest into what becomes the work that i that i share that i make that i yeah yeah so that's beautiful so part of your process is responding to that and i think you know each doing work in the african diaspora there's there's also um a, an immense amount of racial history right a personal embodied you know all of these things and there's also spirituality which Absolutely. each one of you have touched upon in different ways, right? And then also these structural realities and gendered and social realities too, which are also affecting these ideas of praxis, right? 
Um, so maybe you know each one of you spoke to that in such beautiful ways in terms of your own practices and your projects right now. Um, maybe if we could dig a little deeper. Does that feel comfortable? Yeah. Sorry. If we could dig a little bit deeper into that set of ideas. So Julie, you were speaking so beautifully too about, you know, making this work in Madagascar with an all male mm -hmm. company and what that particular set of issues is for you. And then also the intersections with your own traditional practices and how you're kind of digging into those. You mentioned some specific dances and I, I'm not familiar with Malagasy dance. So it was mm -hmm. beautiful for me to hear that and see it um, and kind of put a name to things. So um, would you feel comfortable speaking to kind of some of the ideas that, you're, that you work with when you make a dance? Yeah, uh, I think um, as an artist, we what we what makes us move is something we feel. So, um, my choreographic inspir inspirations come from my feelings, mm -hmm. or from from the so so social subjects, or from an abstract imagination that I I want to 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 make to to make as a choreography. So, um, my field of creativity evolves according to time and context. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the idea comes first before starting to work in the studio, for example. And sometimes uh, we work in the studio, just uh, like a, a routine work, and then the idea comes. So mm -hmm. I think uh, each piece has his, uh, its own way of process. Mm -hmm. uh, concerning my work, so because sometimes I just meet a situation and uh, it it makes me uh, it's it's um, it's give me uh, a will to create something, even if it, there is not uh, there is not a guarantee of showing the work on stage, but just this envy, the, this motivation to create something at the moment, in the moment. And uh, yeah, I think that is the magic of the creativity. And after I see if it has a possibility to go on stage or not, it's, it's okay, it's not a problem. Uh, but for me, the, the important thing is this time of creation, the moment of creation, and also the time I share with my coworkers, the other dancers who work with me the idea and to give them also the space to to express what they think about the topic and what they can bring also uh, to the topic. So uh, apart from the somatic part, I think it's uh, very important in the in the process. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to add a side note here, Julie, you speak many languages. So when I'm, I'm listening to, I'm hearing, I'm hearing French too. And so I know that that's part of what's going on. So I'm going to go back to a question about um, écriture chorégraphique et re mouvement recherché. So write, um, choreographic writing and researched movement, which I think will speak to all of us in terms of practice and process too. Jamal, that might be a slightly different question for you, but we can reframe it in terms of improvisation. Cool. Okay. So Jamal, what would you like to add? And then I'm going to go back to that, like, Yes, um, in totality of my work, mm -hmm. uh, my work is centered around healing and heavy ancestral work. Mm -hmm. Every time I utilize the tools that has been given for the drum or the horn or whatever they did, mm -hmm. it is basically a, a spiritual conversation, invocation with the ancestors, with me being a vessel, transmitting mm -hmm. the frequencies to those that are at the moment of hearing. Mm -hmm. And wherever the conversation may lead cannot be dictated. Sometimes these scenarios become esoteric, which is really above the academia comprehension and things of this sort. And I don't like to use the terms trance or possessed or none of them, because these can get into very degrading terminologies applied to the spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, I do tend to big, take my work and sitting around such as what Julie said, uh, which I like, she said, time and context. Mm -hmm. Time and context is very important uh, and a central part 
of a lot of work that we do and myself specifically because I'm constantly in the process of dealing with research of mm -hmm. ancestral passing of things that the ancestors have endured and dealt with in this land mm -hmm. of what we know in today's America or in the Americas as well as the ancestors that were in the continent mm -hmm. itself and a lot of my work is centered around it so it's bigger and better than dealing with just the central social political same repetitive things that I care that everyone is pretty much on the, I would call it the artistic train of riding the train of. This is a constant work in progress. This is not one thing that we jump to the next subject, we jump to the next subject. This is a evolutionary cycle of work until it's time for me to transcend from this planet into the ethereal realm. Beautiful. Um, so Jamal, you just kind of like super duper deeply highlighted this notion of like spirituality embedded in what we are doing, right? And how we're talking about this, yeah? So this notion of ancestry, this notion of deeper presence beyond the physical spiritual plane, right? And Julie also kind of tapped into that and also did, Eleni, as we were speaking, to ritual, right? Mm -hmm. So there's this notion too within the African diaspora in particular of these of this movement relating to pathways that have always already existed and have been transformed and that we are also transforming and doing, right? Even in this conversation, there's a transformation of, of energy and information, right? So if we're moving our bodies, moving within also choreographing the music, this is why I was like, got all excited about this idea of écriture choreographique, which is something that's used all over West Africa in the Francophone world. And everybody says, particularly the male artist, moi mon écriture choreographique. So it's like this idea to, I'm sorry, not um, male bashing here, but there's this idea of um, choreographic writing that also employ, employs the traditional spiritual materials. And that is a place of experimental recombination. Right. So maybe if we could think about that idea of experimentation as part of process as also being a transformational space, one that's maybe also a ritual process um, that's already there, you know, in different ways in the African diaspora. Anybody working with that material is going to intersect with that on some level. It depends on how deep they get into it. Jamal, you were just saying this is a life passage for you, which is like super deep, right? So everybody has a different intersection with it um, in terms of their own creative process. Um, you know, obviously a, a Haitian mambo in Port-au-Prince is gonna interact with the spirits a little bit differently than others, right? So kind of also bowing down to where ancestry is in this, but also that space of transformation and experimentation. Maybe if we could all kind of speak to that conglomerate of ideas, if that's clear enough, as part of a research process even, yeah? So how do the spirits or spirituality, are that set of ideas or traditionalism, how is that also a place that you invest in or are invested in or is something that you move through in a somatic way as part of your research process or choreographic writing or musical composition slash improvisation, <laughs> which is kind of all the same thing, but yeah. Um, anybody want to speak to that in a way? I mean, in some way you're framing uh, sort of like in some way, you know, um, communicated maybe what, what my thoughts might have been. Um, I, I just, you know, I'm feeling very honored to be a part of this panel today and to be introduced to both uh, Julie's and Jamal's work. Um, it's really wonderful. And to hear, you know, how we express ourselves and um, to hear the threads um, because uh, work in progress lands with me. Um, and yeah, that's, that that's another aspect of moving in the world. And then when I'm thinking about spirituality um, and transformation, that is very much the journey I feel I'm on. Um, and I, I often, well, 
I guess in this moment, given what I'm working on right now and the word, one of the words that I'm holding, uh, which is embedded in my, the title of what I'm doing is conversation, that I feel like there are a lot of conversations going on, mm -hmm. a lot of different spheres. Um, and um, that's how the spiritual side, the, the, my ancestral connections um, are woven into my process. I'm in constant dialogue with, with them. I'm in constant dialogue with it. Um, but again, also this image I gave earlier about my body being a vessel, like that vessel is a spiritual body. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm also thinking about, I'm living, you know, from that space um, mm -hmm. to dive into what it is that I do. Um, yeah, and I don't even know if I'm answering your question or anything, but I just feel like there's something really rich about what you framed and and placed on the table for us to respond to. But I, I also feel like a lot of what has been shared <laughs> has yeah. been, you know, responding to the very thing that you brought up. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to generate this dialogue between all of your incredible work and this set of ideas that I'm obviously very deeply attached to <laughs> and yeah. kind of feel like I'm I feel like I'm kind of in coalition with them but also in practice with them and so there's this 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 kind of um I'm speaking to a set of things and then asking mm -hmm. you to speak to them too there's mm -hmm. no like you have to answer my question I, yeah, yeah yeah it's more like where does this land with you and what happens with it right yeah. um and how are you feeling it because we're you know we each come to um sets of artistic and uh, um, praxis based ideas differently and are gonna move through them and have histories and trajectories of doing that. And also people who've trained us, like our lineages and our families and our mentors and like all of that goes into, um, you know, those like extensive biographies that I read and I'm sure I mispronounced things, sorry, if I did that, it wasn't intentional, um, was to really kind of frame this space right? Where you all could come together and see the threads and then I could also move through them with you. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, thank you. Um, would, I would like to see if Jamal and Julie have anything to add to this set of like, you know, um, yet again, how, do, is there anything else you want to speak to in terms of um, maybe just even the spirituality in your work? And, um, and then we can just kind of pull out a, an audience comment or question and yeah, does that feel comfortable? Yeah, so, that's um, true. Okay, go, go ahead, oh, Julie. Go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> yeah, I just wanna continue about the spirituality in the work. Uh, I always say that uh, dance practice is the, the contemporary ritual. I think mm. I take it like that because even if it's purely somatic, even if you, I train only with my body, I always feel something when I go out from the studio. So uh, that's why I dance until now, because <laughs> I, I feel the, the advantage in my body, inside my body. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is that feeling that uh, I would like to share with, with the people who work with me and with people who, who, who take class in my studio because um yeah i think dance is of the the contemporary ritual yeah mm -hmm. yeah cool mm -hmm. mr moore yes you kind of had a duplex question yeah like triplex question to, to maintain <laughs> clarity yeah uh when you mentioned the experimental that becomes a very interesting subject matter uh, I process experimental as working with formulas. Mm -hmm. And when we work with formulas, these are some of the ancient strategies that our ancestors worked with in the past, throughout the course of history, uh, no matter which system you deal with uh, throughout the continent itself. Mm -hmm. And these formulas are the cause of the epical creation where we are today. Mm -hmm. uh, an example would be if you deal with the Andambalu, which is coming out of the Dogon, where because we did not listen, we are responsible where we are today in the situation mm -hmm. we are in. So 
And you can also look at the sacred wisdom and the teachings of Tehuti, uh, misnominated through Greek culture as Homer, father of medicine. And you can deal with that also in the formulas that was used with him being an alchemist mm -hmm. as well. And Kanum being the creator of the potter's will, we go into the ancient Tamarian or Kometic systems. So we can go ahead and we can go all the way around to the Igbo, Ifa system, mm -hmm. you know, when we're dealing with Shango, the iron and everything else like that. And it can just transcend across the whole continent, various stories. So, you know, when we're dealing with experimentation, we're dealing with formulas and those formulas are either gonna respond, react, be a catalyst, mm -hmm. springboard, or catastrophe. And it's obviously up to us, the individual, to understand how the formulas work and to make them work for us to the best of our ability. So when we're in the process of viewing these rituals, whether it be through dance or expressing uh, through the oracle or the tool, which is the instrument itself, you know, we are doing formulas in real time. Mm -hmm. And the mental structure would be, of course, to have it in a very positive manner. Hopefully, you know, what is you know, on a destructive manner, you know, again, to circle back around to what I said earlier, healing mm -hmm. or to bring about peace or tranquility within oneself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so thinking about this as how we respond to these frameworks, to our lineages, to our histories, to what's embedded in our bodies, right? To the aspect of ritual and spirituality that may be present in a, in a specific cultural entity or in something broader or in a larger continental frame. Um, speaking of which, I just assigned an article on Yambalu for my students this week in a, in a somatic healing class dealing with improvisation. So like just this notion of the divine always present in the spirit, right? And that the ancestor, that African ancestral energies are always there as a place of reactivity is part of what you're saying, right? So I think that um, maybe we just got really deep into an idea of process, which is um, super beautiful. I feel like we should open this up for an audience question. And I am really um, deeply um, amazed by all of this. Let's see. So we have um, a comment, I'm digging it. Um, and then Ashe to all continue on your perspective paths. Peace to brother Jamal, um, audio physio psychic. Do we have any questions or um, I think if we don't have any questions directly from the audience, what I would like to do is um, just really quickly thank you all um, for your immense contributions. Like not only did you show your work today, you each spoke to your own identities as they relate to your process and some of the challenges, and then also some really important updates, um, in regards to work on the continent from Julie and funding issues, which is a huge set of structural things. And, um, I, um, also didn't plug the dance program at Coppin, but I should probably plug it anyway at the end. And um, Coppin is, Coppin State University is an HBCU in West Baltimore. And so I am partially um, enlivening some dialogue surrounding um, experimentation in the arts and how they relate to um, dance and theater and music and um, in adding into this discussion about what is dance at an HBCU and what is it in West Baltimore? And how are we thinking about um, African diasporic culture and black dance as tools of kind of liberation as well, mm. right? Individual, spiritual, collective, um, and how does that relate to ancestry? And of course, because my ideas, my, my work is about <laughs> um, coalition as well, um, kind of thinking about how is this coalition or how can people be in coalition to this, right? Or with it and in support of it. So um, I am deeply supportive of you all and grateful and for these seeds of dialogue that I hope blow on the wind and grow into other dialogues for your work and funding and so much more beauty, okay? So thank you for your contribution to Coppin State University. Um, Jamal is already making lots of contributions to Coppin State University's faculty <laughs> and um, I, I look forward to seeing more of your work in the future and staying in contact. So ultimately grateful, um, much beautiful energy, and I hope that you all have an absolutely incredible day.
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Such Thank a you so much. Thank you. Merci beaucoup.